Morning, Joe. This morning, the Biden administration has announced German Chancellor Angela Merkel will meet with President Biden at the White House on July 15th. This just crossed from the White House. The two leaders will discuss climate change, COVID-19, the economy and international security, according to the White House. As for the president's current meeting with world leaders, the G7 has kicked off now in Cornwall, England. And joining us from Cornwall is Deputy National Security Advisor, Dalip Singh. Dalip, it's good to have you with us this morning. Uh, from your point of view, what is the major objective for President Biden over these next couple of days at the G7 and looking forward to the NATO summit? Uh, we heard two days ago when he spoke to American troops stationed in the UK talk about preserving democracy. How do you view his role today and going forward? Yeah, thanks, Willie, and good morning. You know, so the main message from President Biden this week is to show uh, that our alliances are back. The G7 is back in person for the first time in two years. And more fundamentally, we're back in terms of being unified in our resolve. And the resolve is to show that democracies can still deliver for our people and take on the biggest challenges in the world. Uh, let, let me ask you, uh, Mr. Singh, thanks so much for being with us. We had earlier today, we had Jeffrey Sachs on talking about how uh, multinational corporations, American corporations, hide uh, hundreds of billions of assets, uh, whether it's in the Cayman Islands or whether it's in Bermuda. Uh, we're looking at this global minimum tax. Uh, how important is that to pass and what will that do to make sure that American corporations pay American taxes? Yeah, Joe, this is not just a wonky finance issue. This is an issue that leaders are discussing because what this is about fundamentally is ending a very destructive race to the bottom on corporate tax rates. That race to the bottom has meant that we've relied more and more on workers to generate tax revenues. It's meant that we don't have as many resources to invest domestically. And it's meant that we can't grow the middle class as fast as we'd like. So we're coming together this week at a leader's level to endorse a global minimum tax that can end the race to the bottom and help us fund our domestic renewal agenda. Caddy Kay's with us and has a question for you. Caddy. Mr. Singh, thank you. Um, look, the messages of uh, renewed alliances are very powerful. Europeans clearly happy to have Joe Biden on the scene, a sense of normalcy being returned after the years of Donald Trump. But that doesn't mitigate the fact that there are real substantive issues on which European countries and the United States do not agree. And they're some of the key issues, how close to get to China, how to deal with the threat of Russia. What's Joe Biden going to do, particularly when it comes to France and Germany, to try to persuade them to separate themselves a bit more from China and from Russia and to throw their lot in with a European, with an American-led approach? That's yeah, a great question, Caddy. You know, look, the president likes to talk about this being an historical moment, a moment of choice. Uh, there are some who believe that top-down autocracies deliver the best path to generating results, and there are others, like us, who believe that democracies and our shared democratic values, freedom, opportunity, rule of law, the dignity of all people, that that's the single best path to delivering results. And that's what unifies us at the G7. The French, the Germans, the UK, the Italians, the Canadians, the Japanese, the EU as a whole. We're going to come together and show, not just in words, words are important, but also in actions, what we're for and what we don't tolerate. I think what you hear this week is, in terms of what we're for, uh, there's going to be an infrastructure initiative that we'll come together on that develops a, a positive alternative to China's Belt and Road Initiative, one that's much more transparent, one that's driven by our values, one that has high standards. In terms of what we don't tolerate, forced labor is going to be on the agenda. And here, too, we can come together and say, we do not tolerate the use of forced labor in our supply chains. And our consumers should be free of products that are made in that way. I think we'll have unity of purpose in those ways. Mr. Singh, we have seen cyber criminals shut down a pipeline here in the United States. We know that our water systems and our electric grids are at constant peril uh, from uh, cyber criminals. Next week, President Biden is meeting with President Putin in Russia. And Russia seems to tolerate criminals operating within their midst in terms of cyber crime. What are we doing about increased cyber security? Yeah, you're right. Cyber 
Uh, ransomware and cyber attacks, they're an urgent, they're an escalating threat. I think this is another area in which G7 nations agree. What can we do about it? Well, number one, we can agree to hold to account any criminal ransomware networks operating within our borders. Number two, we can share information to support prosecutions. And number three, we can all work to modernize our cyber defenses. Um, that's that's a, an area that's going to be on the agenda at the G7, and I'm sure that'll be the focus of, of discussions with Russia uh, later in the week. Deputy National Security Advisor Dalip Singh joining us live this morning from Cornwall, UK, site of the G7. Mr. Thing, thanks for your time this morning. We appreciate it.